the following has been developed to help students think a little bit more about connecting together the items and context with what they know about various topics in education for the, uh, the questions that we find, question five on the slide two paper. Uh, so we're going to take the context of investigating language barriers uh, with educational achievement. And as you can see, you've got an item here that discusses the idea, to particularly that language skills are vital for success within middle class schools, but within deprived homes, working class homes, uh, minority homes, we actually find that socialisation and barriers uh, get in the way of students uh, developing those skills and being successful. And the question is asking students to use materials from the item and elsewhere to assess the strengths and limitations of using questionnaires to investigate this link. So look at questionnaires, so we've got the link between language barriers and educational achievement. So if we take the item apart, here's some of the things that we could draw from this item. For example, socialisation in the home could be talked about. And we're talking mainly about cultural deprivation outside of school, the issue of accessing this, getting a valid picture of this. How, how can we get to that as, a, as an area of interest for sociology? And is a survey going to be the best way for us to do that? And then we've got the whole point about underachievement and which groups are involved. This, the item tells us that working class and ethnic minority students have got an issue there. So this raises the point, maybe, is it to do with the culture, working class culture? Is it a restricted code issue or is it an ethnicity issue, an EAL issue? And we may even ask ourselves points about, well, if we've got two variables there, working class and ethnic minorities, can we find correlations between that and educational performance, which this survey can help us with? And middle class culture, we can also tease out the fact that schools themselves are quite biased uh, against working class culture and the working class have got barriers to learning, maybe drawing upon cultural capital and the ideas there of Bourdieu. If we move further on, we see a reference to anonymity. And with this, we can think about this being quite a good strength, that being anonymous, kids can be more valid and open, discuss their personal experiences more. And again, family life and experiences of school life could be drawn upon uh, we're using this method to share their details. Maybe we compare different social classes and find correlations, like we said before. We've got this point as well here about people being uncomfortable, um, particularly with researchers from a middle class background. And that's an interesting point, you know, because one strength of the survey may well be that there's no researcher effect, there's no class distrust, that the kind of kids we're talking about um, can, f can get this filled in by themselves or by the parents and it overcome that problem. Uh, and then we've got another problem mentioned about a low response rate. And we may ask ourselves, why is there a low response rate for this, um, th this, these particular people in this particular context? That's a limitation. It affects the representativeness of the data. So from this item, we're, we're just drawing on certain triggers, certain things that we can bounce into our knowledge of this topic from differential academic achievement, but also things that are going to trigger our understanding of that method and whether or not we you know where that method fits in with these. We're trying to make a connection between the two. So with that said, uh, we can draw upon the main strengths and limitations of this method. First of all, anonymity. We could say that these students, many of them who feel mis uh, marginal, uh, they distrust the man, middle class schools, cultures, or feel uncomfortable with them, this may be a good method for them to uh, express themselves and, and, and be researched by sociology. Again, we're connecting the method to the issue, to the clients, to the context. Correlation and links, we can use closed questions and see if language and achievement are connected together, which positivists are very interested in. We've also got the fact we can make large scale trends because we can, we can repeat this. It's reliable and it's replicable across many schools and we can test our findings between different schools. Some methods we can't do that with. This is a much more quantitative method that allows us to, to form those correlations. And there's no research effect. As we said a moment ago, middle class figure, an impact on working class children, they may distrust them, or maybe even deferential, a kind of Hawthorne effect where they give them the answers they want to hear and not being as valid as we'd, it, uh, you know, as we'd like it to be. But with this method, there is no effect because the researcher isn't present with them at the time when it's being completed. We have got the problems, though, there being a low response rate, non-completion by those mainly with low literacy levels, you know. Uh, they may wonder about the motives of the research, they may distrust the school, they may distrust the man. And also sabotage, they may want to hurt the school that's marginalised them. They associate it with the school, a place they're marginal, a middle class uh, enterprise that rejects them, and they may therefore want to damage that. Literacy levels, 
You know, we understand that the kids are socialised. We said a moment ago, poor literacy. There may be issues there in completing the actual form because they've got literacy issues. Struggle to complete it where these are low. Maybe an interviewer, an interview is a better approach for this. Uh, and maybe we need a method that can overcome the problem if we don't get into meanings or explanations for behaviour and why things are. Maybe a more qualitative method may help us to unpack their experiences and feelings. And finally, the absence of rapport and trust, which are quite important for these sort of kids to open up. Maybe other methods are better than a questionnaire, which may be more formal and associated with the man. So maybe methods like unstructured interviews may be much more effective for uh, communicating with these children and their families to win their trust and to gain a bit more openness in the work. I hope that that was useful for thinking about linking together um, advantages and disadvantages of methods in the context of education. Those connections are so important to get to that top level in the Mark Scheme.